So the PlayStation 5 is coming out November 12th of this year, just a couple short months away. And there's a lot of people excited, some people not so much. And then there's the people who are kind of like in the middle. Then there's the people who are just like, I'm just going to wait. Or they say everybody should wait because it'll be cheaper. There'll be more games. That's the one sentiment I don't really understand is if everybody waited, then it would be a failure of a launch. Companies would be less likely to make games for it, right? So what I wanted to do today was review the launch titles for all five of the PlayStation consoles from the past to the future coming up, right? It kind of take a look and rank them essentially like who had the best launch because I, I really want to focus on this and look at the ps5 launch because i do have one pre-ordered but i've been racking my brain what is there that is must have for me what am i going to get my money's worth out of on the ps5 am i just going to play ps4 games on it when i get it like that's what i want to look at so i want to go through I, I spent a bunch of time getting all these box arts together. There's a lot of sources out there for the launch of each one of these consoles. And some there's some variances. And just to, to make it clear, I'm in North America. So I'm specifically talking about the North American launch. So the PlayStation 1. These are the launch titles minus Twisted Metal. I added it in here. It did come out a short while later. And that was definitely a big one. But it wasn't a launch title. Launch window title, yes. So there might be some variances here and there with that. But the PS1 came out September 9th, 1995 in North America. And I did not personally have one right away. I had a Sega Saturn. That, that's what I was into. And I thoroughly enjoyed that console. The PS1 was on my radar. And I saw all these games. But I didn't get one until Final Fantasy VII came out. Like I had a Nintendo 64 and thought, oh, the next Final Fantasy will be on it. And then nope came out for the PlayStation 1, had to transition, and I'm super happy that I did. The PS1 is one of my all-time favorite consoles, not going to lie here, but I wasn't there for the launch right away. It took me till 7 came out. So I did play quite a few of these launch titles, and I was aware of them, but this is one of the biggest things. Like, okay, we had Air Combat, Namco game like Ace Combat, uh, ESPN Extreme Games, Kaleen, Kaleek, I'm not even sure what that game is. NBA Jam Tournament Edition, I played that. Power Serve, 3D Tennis. These games that had generic names and like generic covers, I usually bypassed them. I don't know. It could have been a great game, right? The Raiden Project, I did have that eventually. Played Rayman. Ridge Racer is the biggest thing here for me. I And I talk about this a lot on my channel is over the years with retro gaming, I think it started around Super Nintendo. Yeah, prior to that, there was arcade ports on every console, but it wasn't until the Super Nintendo, at least in my eyes, where we started getting games that were ported from the arcade that were very close to the arcade experience. So seeing stuff like Ridge Racer that I played all the time in the arcade definitely got me excited. You know what I mean? Tickled, it tickled something. Tickled something for you. You know, you know what I'm saying. Some people are like, don't say it, don't say it. But yes, Ridge Racer was one of the first games that I got besides Final Fantasy VII. So I did have to go back and, you know, I, I, I knew some of the games I wanted to grab and some of them were cheaper by that time. So screw it. Street Fighter the movie, boo. <laughs> Who cares? I've never played that on the PS1 that I could remember. But I have played it, you know, other ports and it's just like whatever, man. Battle Arena Toshinden was another one I was big on. That arcade style gaming. Total Eclipse. Uh, which I know is a multi-platform release. Zero Divide, a 3D fighter. And then, like I said, Twisted Metal came out a little while later, so I'm not really counting that. But it was a fairly varied launch. Not too many games here. But what would happen is, is you know, the months would go by and games would start trickling out. I think this was a fairly solid launch as far as the games go, but not the most amazing. There's probably some games you'll be like, hey, I remember this from launch. But they were games that came out like a little later on. I wanted to try to focus on launch day. So there was the PS1. We'll be ranking these when I get done as far as like, hey, who was first? So the PlayStation 2, this was a huge launch. It was the first PlayStation I was there for launch day. And my God, was it a crazy time. I remember getting mine at Target and it was just nuts. But the variety here was just ridiculous. So PlayStation 2, almost 20 years ago now, October 26th of 2000 is when it launched in North America. And wow, there's a lot of games here that I wound up playing later that I didn't embrace right away, like Armored Core 2. But on launch, I had Kessen. I remember that. 
Ridge Racer 5, like I said, really love the Ridge Racer games. SSX was cool, but multi-platform. Street Fighter EX3 I, I bought. I don't remember exactly when, but wow. Look at all the different games here. I'm not saying they're all great because they're not. Like Kesson, I don't think is the greatest game ever, but it was like the first game that I had and I really enjoyed it, but I realized it's not that great of a game. But there was just a little bit for everybody here. I think Tekken Tag Tournament might have been the biggest thing because Tekken you know, was huge and it still is. And to have a Tekken Tag game or a Tekken game in general at launch was big. And you had stuff like this. What is this? Surfing H3O by Rockstar. I would see stuff like this with these generic ass covers and generic names and just bypass them. This could be like somebody will probably be out there saying, you're a fool. Surfing H3O was the best PS2 launch game. It's the best game of all time. Just the greatest. I don't know. I would see stuff like this with generic names and just whatever. That was, that was kind of big on a lot of consoles, especially like the Wii. You would get a lot of stuff like that. Just generic ass names and, and covers and people would just like, whatever. I'm not buying that. That's kind of how I am. Is it right? Is it wrong? I don't know. It's the way I live my life. It's how I choose to be. So don't judge. You know what I'm saying? So there's the PS2 launch. Like I said, huge variety. I don't think any console has come close to how the PS2 launched with how much you know variety and how many games were available at the time. Definitely nuts. Now, the PS3 was a huge launch as well as far as people going nuts to get one. But really, when you look at the launch titles, I think the biggest thing for me, and I had a PS3 right away, was Resistance Fall of Man. I really wish they would continue on with that franchise. Ridge Racer 7 I had, but we're mostly looking at sports titles here. And that's definitely big for people who are into those games. You had Madden 07, Tiger Woods, NHL, NBA, 2K Sports going on there. You had some variety, but not huge variety. And I'm really trying to rack my brain. What games did I have on launch? All I could remember was Resistance Fall of Man. A couple of these games I got later on, like Call of Duty 3, I remember. Uh, Genji, I remember. Dark Kingdom, I, I never played that on the PS3. I only played it on the PSP, but that was there at launch. Kind of weak, in my opinion. You know, shifting more towards sports titles. So uh, there was a segment of the market there who was excited for that, but the variety was really lacking as far as the PS3 went back in November 17, 2006 is when it launched. Definitely crazy, man. Going back, looking at all these different PlayStation launches, you know, it, it's nuts, man. It's been since 1995 in North America that we had a PlayStation. Now we're having the PS5 coming up pretty soon. So definitely, I think the PS3 was pretty weak as far as the launch goes. Like, there's still a lot of stuff that came out afterwards, but launch day, that's what you had to choose from. The PS4, definitely nowhere near the PS2 launch, but there's a little bit of variety here. You had, uh, I mean, you were kind of skewed towards, like, sports and first-person shooters once again. You had Angry Birds, if that's what you were into. Need for Speed Rivals, Skylanders, Knack. What? Killzone? I can't even remember what I had at, at launch. Was it Killzone? Because I really like Killzone. I know I had Call of Duty Ghosts at some point. Probably around launch. You had Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Uh, Injustice. Gods Among Us Ultimate Edition. So a port over to the PS4. A little bit lacking, but still a little bit of variety. You had some stuff for the kids. You got some stuff for the people who just want to dance. You got some stuff for people who just want to shoot some shit. And you got some stuff for people who just want to play sports games. Not too bad. And a fighter there. So a little bit of variety. Not the worst launch, but not that memorable for me, to be honest with you. And then skipping on over to the PS5. The PS4, did I, did I say when that came out? PS4 was just 2013, November 15th. That was few short years ago, seven of them to be exact, right? The PS5, now this is where the meat and the potatoes are at right here because this is what's coming out. And on launch day, 99% of these games are launch day titles. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. I don't know why they just didn't call it Call of Duty Cold War. Cold Cuts. Um, comes out a day after the PS5. But these are the titles. This is what's coming out on launch day besides Call of Duty the next day. And this is very lacking. It's not a huge amount of variety here. There's some neat stuff, but what is a system seller here? I'm not really seeing too much for me, but I am seeing stuff I want to play. So I think part of it is that trip, like third-party AAA games are kind of being stifled in that 
they want to launch these games all at the same time for every console out there. So that's why the launch titles for the PS5 are a little slim here. But you got stuff like Valhalla coming out, which I've never been a huge Assassin's Creed fan, but I like the setting of this one. I may give it a go. I don't know, but I'm not overly excited. Black Ops, Cold War. Um, I've been saying I'm going to get back into Call of Duty. I think that's going to be a, a, a title that I buy, but it's not a system seller for me. A lot of people have been saying Demon's Souls is the biggest one for them. And, you know, it's a game I know is great. Came out in 2009. This is a whole new you know, remaster of it or whatever you want to call it. And a lot of people are excited for it. And I get it. For me, I've never been able to dedicate the time to master these games. So I'm not huge into them. So that's one I'm not excited for like others are. Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition. Okay. Ported over to the PS5. Godfall. I've been trying to dig into this one. I thought it would be a game I would like. But all the videos and stuff I've seen of it, I'm, I'm kind of iffy. It hasn't like really like jumped out at my face and then you got madden 21 sack boys big sack adventure what okay i mean you got the kids covered there i guess you know little kids wanting to play some sack boy action all right spider-man miles morales and then watchdog legions i'm not really sure what's the system seller here for me so it does make sense when i hear people saying i'm just gonna wait because there'll be more games maybe there'll be a price decrease i get it but I'm I'm like, man, I, I have one pre-ordered. I'm going to have one at launch. Am I just going to play those PS4 games on it instead? I don't know. A little, it's okay. It's not the worst launch, but not that exciting as well. So before we go, I really want to see what you guys think as far as the ranking. What would your ranking be as far as, you know, what was the best launch? What was the worst launch? So Drop a comment down below on that. I'm going to, real quick, I already, you guys probably already know, PS2 is number one for me. Um, then I'm going to say PS1 because there's some very memorable stuff here. Maybe nostalgia is kicking in on that. So one, two, um, I'm going to say PS4 is three. And then PS5, even though it's not out yet, is four. And the PS3 had the weakest for me the weakest so ps3 is going to be at the end so one i know this is confusing playstation 2 is number one ps1 number two four is three five is four and then three is the last place for me so that's how i'm going to go ahead and rank them there i just more so enjoyed going back and looking through the different launches for all these consoles here a lot of exciting stuff a little bit of uh disappointment with some things here Really curious to hear what you guys have to say, what your thoughts are as far as the PS5 launch coming up and the previous launches of the PlayStation consoles. Drop a comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Hit that like button. All the interaction helps me to continue doing what I'm doing and grow my channel. So it is very much appreciated. And with that, I will catch you guys next time. Thank you very much. Peace out. Bye-bye and boom. Big ass thumb, but what?